All right, let's go to the third out. Uh, so the Astros are off right now to a, uh, I mean, quite an underwhelming start uh, to this point where they're like, look, they're six and eleven right now. They're standing last in the AL West. Uh, they've taken they got swept by the Yankees earlier on in the year uh, to start the year. They lost. Uh, they they split that series with the Rangers. They got swept by the Royals in Kansas City. Uh, they're off to a tough start, and it's not really going to get any better for them since they're playing the Braves uh, in this upcoming series. Dalton, how worried at this point should the Astros be going forward? I think the worry for them is, to me, more long-term than short-term, as weird as that is to say. Uh, I think part of what is starting to befall the Astros is what they were built on was an incredible analytical background with guys like Lunau, who for everything that he was that was shitty, was also an, was also an unbelievable baseball executive, to yep. now, from everything that we're hearing, Dana Brown is just turning the reins over to guys who used to play the game, as if the fa- as if guys who used to play the game are automatically, like, good talent evaluators and good, like, organizational builders. Like, that's right. a problem. We don't see that work out all that often in sports. Yeah. Um, so, to me... Like, there's enough talent on that team that they're going to be fine, um, both, like, pitching and hitting. Like, there's just enough talent built up there. There's enough, um, you know, postseason cachet built up there in terms of reputation that, like, I'm not too worried about them this year. I still think they win that division. I still think that they're a World Series contender. The pitching has been a little concerning, but I think it'll work itself out. Yeah. The the concern for me is that, like, you know, I heard this said on another show I was listening to that, like, there's a real argument that that team might be really bad in like two years because mm-hmm. I'm just not like, like it seems as if they're kind of going away from what wins organizationally, like they're going away from what got them to where they are organizationally. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I like from like a five to seven year view standpoint, I'm selling my stock in the Astros. From a 2024 standpoint, I'm probably buying the dip. That's how I look at them. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, here's the thing. The Astros, to me, have a very, very specific problem. Um, and it's I feel like it's not one that we talk about very often. Like, just as, as baseball people, this is not something that we talk about very often, right? How the Astros are getting to their back end is a real issue. Like, and, and I'm, I'm to the point where I'm like, okay, like you're going to need these starters to give you six, seven innings, every start. Like, like we, we're at a point and, and, and obviously how unrealistic that is because starters just don't have it like that every day. But I mean, this is a, a team that uh, where the middle of their bullpen can't get anybody out. I, I, I mean, I, that's kind of where I'm at here. I mean, look, as far as like, like Brian Abreu to the, to the, for the most part this season has been. I mean, very not good to start the year. Uh, he's been really kind of a liability in the back of their pen. And, you know, as far as, you know, like I said, they've they've got enough injuries to speak of, right? I think Verlander kind of co- is, is going to make his return in the coming week or so. But, I mean, after that, I mean, uh, you've got starting pitchers even that are going to get, like Hunter Brown is getting, you know, J.P. France is getting shelled to start the year. So, you know, we're kind of at a point now where you're like, okay, are all of these pitchers that are going to potentially come back in the middle of the year, is it even going to matter to that point? Because if they keep losing games like this, then I, like they, uh, we can both kind of agree that the A's and the Angels are not going to make any noise in that division without any stretch of the imagination. I think we can both come to an agreement on that. However, the Mariners and the Rangers are real teams. And the Rangers are going to have teams uh, are going to have uh, pitchers of their own that are going to come back and strengthen their rotation. And it's been way better than what we've seen from the Astros this year. If you would have told me that, OK, I have a concern in their bullpen and I'm talking about either the Rangers or the Astros, I would have said, OK, well, then it's the Rangers because the Rangers had problems last year. They just don't have the names in their bullpen like they uh, like the Astros do. But. Even Josh Hader hasn't been great. Like, their bullpen's a real, real problem, Dalton. I think that's going to be a long-term issue. I, that's just not something that's easy to fix. It's not. 
I, I don't know that I agree. I think that's actually really – I think that's probably one of the easiest things to fix. You think so? In terms of, like, acquiring talent on the cheap on the trade market, you go grab a, go grab a couple relievers who are running hot. Go grab a starter who's running hot. We know the Astros are going to be active at the deadline. Like that's something that they that they've yeah been always like, right. And look, they're they're six and eleven. They're tied one one at the Braves tonight, but that looks like that's about to get out of hand for Arigetti, their starter. Um, yeah. I think realistically, like if this six and eleven turns into like fifteen and twenty five, and fifteen and twenty five turns into thirty and forty three, like. Mm-hmm. Then things can start to get hairy as we go along, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, and after this Atlanta series, you know, they get Washington. Cubs are pretty good, but then they get Colorado, then they get Cleveland. That's a lot of winnable games uh, yeah. coming up for them. This is also a team that has 24 games left combined on their combined on their schedule against the Angels and the A's. So, like, yeah. To me, it's hard to imagine them going worse than like sixteen and eight in those twenty-four games. Mm-hmm. So, like, if we take a sixteen and eight, we plop it on their record right now. That's twenty-seven and eighteen, right? I, you know, I, and again, I know that's like a silly exercise, but like, I, I just think that you know, look, the Yankees beat up on them. The Yankees are red hot. They took two out of three from Toronto. That's something. You know, Texas is playing pretty good ball. Kansas City's on fire. And then they took two out of three from Texas. I just – to me, it's it's kind of early season blues so far. And I think that the pen issues are real. But, like, it's the same pen issues the Dodgers have. And, like, we're not talking about the Dodgers that way, right? Like, the Dodgers have Phillips at the back and Hudson at the back, and they trust them. They have no way to get there right now unless their starters cover a bunch of innings. But yeah. the bats are just covering it for the Dodgers right now. Like, well, I, I think like- – you know, I, I, the I, Dodgers I, are winning games, though. Like, like, I think that's really the difference. Is that it's you're right. The the problems are similar, but like the Dodgers are finding ways to win above that. Right. I mean, the, the Astros are uh, what the Astros are doing now is they're losing games late. Like they, they get out to early leads and then they lose late because they just they can't close games. Now, to an extent, I agree with you to the point where like, okay, maybe I'm overestimating the difficulty of this being a problem to fix, but that's also where like you need to fix Abreu's issues. You need to fix Presley's issues at some point in this year. Now I'm not ready to full hit the full blown panic button, but this is definitely something that I think like you can't wait until the deadline to fix this, right? This is oh, something no. that you got you got to fix this like may one. I, I, I think you, I think you see where you're at, what you, where you're at may one, right? Let's say, let's say they lose two out of three to Atlanta. Yeah, and now they're sitting at seven and thirteen, and then they go on this, um, you know, what? It's an eight-game road trip. Let's uh, let's say they go on this eight-game road trip. They go four and four. Yeah, right. And then you beat Cleveland at home. You finish the month, what? Four four games under, mm-hmm. five games under. Right. Like, it's just not like to me. Once they start getting ten, fifteen under, that's when you start to have those conversations. Six and 11 is such a tiny sample, man. Like, it's so easy to forget that this early in the season. Yeah. Like, six and 11 is just not a representative sample of anything. Yeah. And so it's hard for me to really get that bent out of shape about it, especially because these guys you're talking about, Ryan Presley's been good for a long time. Like, he has been, sure. I'd bet on him finding it. Josh Hader's been good for a long time. I'd bet on him finding it, you know? Um, Abreu, we'll see, you know, but but I just think that I think that there are enough pieces there that they're going to figure it out. Yeah. Um, maybe figuring it out for them means that they're a wild card this year and it's a division champion. I could see that happening, mm-hmm. but like I'm not I'm not concerned that the Astros are going to go you know 72 and 90. I just don't. No think that, God. I don't think that's in the cards, right? So. No. Um. But if I'm the Astros, I'm th- I'm sitting here and I'm thinking. If I'm an Astros fan, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, man, like. We better get after it in yeah. the market this year because these guys are getting old. They're running out of time. Like, you know, I mean, I get yeah. some of the guys aren't getting old, right? But like some of these dudes, like Altuve's not getting younger. Bregman's about to be a free agent. And I doubt they're going to bring him back. Um, yeah. That core has slowly been breaking apart, and they don't have the system that they had before. That's not. Yeah. It's not a good farm system. There's not. There are not the replacements coming that there were when they lost Correa. 
and yeah. when they lost Springer, right? Those guys you lost them, and you knew you had a Jeremy Pena coming up. You knew you had a Yiner Diaz coming up, right? Like, right. That that system's dry now. So, yeah. like, I think because of that, they're going to go balls to the wall to fix problems over time. Too. Yeah. Well, it's definitely possible that they do that. Um, yeah, it's it's tough to imagine that this was once like a like before the Astros got this good, they were terrible. Oh yeah, for a while, like they were awful for they, a, a good stretch. What the Orioles are doing now is what the Astros did in the mid 2010s. Oh my gosh, you know, like, we're yeah. gonna be awful, and we're gonna get number one picks, and we're just gonna stack up talent in the minors, and then we're eventually gonna unleash it. And it worked for them, and it's working now pretty well for the Orioles too. We've seen plenty of examples right. of teams that doesn't work too, and those ones don't get talked about. Right. Uh, but you know, it's that that was the model they went with, and now we're kind of reaching the end of that era a little bit. I think for them, we'll see. Yeah, well, I, you you're probably right about that. We are reaching the end of that era. Here's the other thing too: is that like I've been saying that for years that. Being terrible, like, like this is why I don't understand the whole, and, and we don't have to go down this rabbit hole for that long, but this is why I don't understand why the whole tanking thing is such a big deal. I just don't get it, right? That is how you get good. If you are awful, if you suck for a half decade, guess what? You're going to be good for the next decade. Like, that's kind of how I feel on this whole thing. Eh, I, I think there are too many examples to the contrary, though. Like we we look at the Astros as the shining example of that, and the Orioles as the shining example of that. But we don't yeah. talk about the Tigers who have been awful for twelve years and now are just kind of starting to get good. Sure, we, I understand that. You know, we, we don't we don't talk about how long it took. Like, I mean, the A's have been down for a little while, right? Like, well, yeah, but that's also. I mean, I mean, I mean, listen, the A's haven't even had a problem with developing players. The problem with the A's is that they developed players and then let them go. Like that's like as soon as their players get good, they trade them all. Right. But, but what I'm saying is like, I, I think this idea that like, if you want to get good, you just got to get bad. It doesn't always work. No, like, it doesn't. It, it, it works. If you hit on the right draft picks, you get the right guys in, you have good, put you're, you're good at developing players. You're analytically driven. That's part of why it works. Like, I don't think the Astros can hit the reset button on that with Jeff Bagwell calling the shots is what I'm getting at. No, maybe not. Maybe you not. Know? But, but the this is kind of where I'm getting at, though, is that like, yeah, it doesn't always work. But if like if if you're going, the worst thing that you can be in sports, in my opinion, is average, right? Because you're not good enough to be among the top contenders, and you're not bad enough to get premier talent to get yourself back to a position of that. I'm just kind of of the belief that okay, if you're like if if you're gonna be like the 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 White Sox forever, then like I I just don't see you getting anywhere. Like that's kind of where I'm going. My my thing with that, I agree with you. If we're talking about football or we're talking about basketball, I don't agree with that in baseball. Like like in baseball, what spot you get picked in the first round, like the the extent to which that matters with major league success is like that correlation is so much looser than it is. It is. Sports. You're right. Yes. Um, like the Dodgers have made a killing in the draft and they're never drafting higher than like 25. Yeah. Like it, it, it's not, it's one of those things like to me, it's so much more about what are you pouring into your scouting and development mm -hmm. than it is like, how are you tanking now right. where I think, where I think those teams can make the decisions that matter there for me, it's not about how much you're losing. It's about what you're getting when you trade things away. Yeah. Uh, like the nationals are starting to see the, see that bear fruit a little bit, right? Like James Wood is mashing in the minors for them. CJ Abrams, CJ Abrams is starting to look really good. Josiah Gray, another guy with an unfortunate elbow injury, right? But they're starting to see with him. Kenzie Poor looks okay. Like yeah. they, they're an example of, I think it not working out quite as well, but it's kind yeah. of on its way to me. It's not so much. You have to be really, really bad for a while. It's when you're bad, you have to do a good job of reinvesting in the talent. Mm -hmm. And I think where where the Astros got that right, where the Orioles got that right, is like the investments that they're making in player development. But like the White Sox aren't investing in player development, the A's aren't investing in player development. They're just bad, and they're and that you know the Rockies yeah. are another example of that, right? Like the Rockies have no idea how to develop talent. They're just bad, 
And it's right. like being bad doesn't mean you're going to be good. It's being bad and doing the right things that give you that chance. That's sure. Awesome. Well, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I don't, I think that kind of goes without saying, I, I, I you know, I don't want to make it seem like I'm saying that that's the exact science of how you get good. You're right. It, you have to put the right resources, resources into player development and all of that stuff. But at the same time, I think we wouldn't be talking about the Orioles the same way we'd be talking about them if they didn't have the number one pick to go get Jackson holiday. Right. Well, and you're well, right. You're right. It's, it's to the point where, like in the major league draft, you're right. Where you get drafted is less important than how it is in the NFL and in the NBA. But those guys do get drafted there for a reason at the same time. Sure. Sure. But so here, here's, here's the, here's what I would say, right? My, my main counter to it mm -hmm. is that is a way that can work to get yeah. good. Sure. But if we actually look at like, okay, who are the best teams around the league right now? Consensus, right? The Dodgers were not built that way. The Yankees were not built that way. The Jays, the Blue Jays, if you consider them one, right, they weren't built that way. Mm -hmm. The Braves were not built that way. Um, the – who am I missing, right? The Astros were built that way. Um, the Twins were not built that way. Like, more often than not, the teams that are really good, when they're bad, they're okay, they're mediocre, they're mm -hmm. below average, and then they – start to hit on players because they're investing in hitting on players. I don't think you have to be bad to do that. To me, the being bad is just owners being cheap. So I guess right. that, that's kind of where, where I come in on that. Right. Well, to wrap up this this Astros bit, uh, right now, as far – and this is excluding what they're doing tonight. Uh, right now, they are 29th in K per nine. They are 29th in Team ERA this season. They have a 5-3-2 Team ERA to start the year. In a, pretty much in every pitching category, they are in the bottom of the league. Batting average against, hits allowed, runs allowed, stolen bases against. They're twenty eighth in WHIP. They give up. They they've they've. I mean, it's just it's it has not been a great pitching year for the Astros. However, in a lot of the offensive categories, they're top five, and I think that uh, that's you know that's something to look up on as well. Average their third on base percentage, their fifth slugging third, OPS third. You know, they hits third. They're right there among the top teams in the league as far as uh, their offensive production, but their pitching has been failing them. I don't think we can expect that uh, to carry on throughout the rest of the season.